You may have already heard that you can use ChatGPT to generate a resume. So maybe you're thinking as a student, should I do that? As a faculty member wondering how am I going to catch that or discourage that if I'm wanting to grade people's individual writing? Well, let's take a look. As a bit of background, uh, my name is Dr. Sarah Moore and I'm on faculty at the University of Texas at Dallas. One of the things I run here is a software app called Quincia. Quincia models our artificial intelligence applicant tracking system, which is a whole lot of fancy words for, it's like when you apply for a job online for Target and you submit your resume and do an online interview, it replicates that same process. For really big corporations, it is not necessarily ever going to happen that a person's going to look at your resume because that resume has been scored. And if you get a low score, probably not going to be seen. So with that background in your head, let's take a look at what ChatGPT generated when I asked it for a resume. So here you'll see I put in a pretty basic prompt asking it to write a resume for a guy named Joe who interned at Goldman Sachs in the MBA program at UTD, gave it a few more details. There are definitely better prompts online out there than this, but I was trying to replicate sort of that initial experience of using ChatGPT. You'll see that it gave me out a resume. Some of it, it made up. Um, so it told me I went to, or told Joe, he went to Baylor and did his BBA there. It, generated these details about Goldman Sachs, see some information on the Plano job, and I did tell it to put in that, and then it made them some certifications. Now, when I first started doing this, uh, ChatGPT did not include this note about this being a sample resume. The more I did it, or maybe it got tired of me, it started telling me that this is a sample resume. It's important to tailor your resume to the specific job you're applying for. 100% agree. Curious, why did it add that? And it said that it added it because your resume should be unique and tailored to the specific job. 100% agree. Um, as is the resumes that it was pulling up and generating tended to be pretty blank bland, I guess. I was going to say blank <laughs> of content. They're not blank of content, but they're just not that good. Here's one that I had to generate for uh, somebody who's a recent marketing grad. You'll see assisted in developing and implementing marketing campaigns. If you're in marketing, you know that's really fluffy. What does that mean? What kind of marketing campaigns? What markets? What metrics? You need to have some data to back that up. If you're not including any of that, when you get into those applicant tracking systems, your resume is going to be way, way down low. So what about for Turnitin? Well, I have good news and bad news here. Let me pull up one of the resumes. You'll see I ran through a bunch of these. Uh, it's giving me a similarity score of 13%, but that similarity score does not include the AI. That is just a traditional similarity score. Now, if you're a student, you will not see this little AI box down at the corner. You will if you're a faculty member. So what I found pretty consistently, both with chat GPT 3.5 and with 4, is that it's not able to detect content in resumes. Turnitin says that it has designed this tool for long form writing or for sentences. So if you have a resume where it's pretty long, like let's say that objective statement was a pretty long statement, it will be able to detect that. There was one resume that I was able to get it to detect that it was not AI, and that was one where somebody had written pretty long on that resume. Now let's contrast that with a cover letter. So you will see this is one of the candidates I already showed you, and down in the corner, this cover letter written by ChatGPT uh, caught at potentially 100% um, for the AI detection by Turnitin. So what does this mean for you? Well, if you're a faculty member, I'd probably consider doing a cover letter assignment. Uh, you also could have them do the resume, but have them talk about the assignment. I'm um, here, you'll see Turnitin's notes about what it does and does on a tech. Look through these, uh, make sure that you understand exactly what it's going to do. Now, if you're a student, what does this mean for you? I don't think that the AI was a bad way to generate ideas. If you're really stuck, do that maybe to get a sense of what you can say about a job at Target. That's not a terrible idea. But overall, would you want to submit this? Don't do it. Don't use it to submit for a job or for class. It is not that strong. If you're ever not sure, you also really should be asking your faculty member for their policy on whether or not you're allowed to use AI in a classroom. If I'm grading writing, I want to see your writing, uh, not AI. And I want to throw one other idea out there. If you are a faculty member who's assigning resumes, one way that you could make sure that everybody is writing their own resume is to go back to that sort of old school assignment of having people do mock interviews in class. And I've seen this in real life settings as well, uh, where you bring in a candidate and just see if they remember what they wrote on the resume. 
that's not changed. That is something where we've had to watch for that always uh, for truthfulness and ethically written resumes. Good luck. Uh, if you have questions, feel free to put them down in the chat or connect with me on LinkedIn and ask.